everyone. I'm David Marshall, joined by Brian Ducharme. Welcome to VM Blog's coverage of the KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2025 event taking place in London. And today we're very glad to have with us Toby Knup, the VP General Manager of Cloud Native at Nutanix. Toby, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Can you kick things off? Uh, I know most people that, that watch VM Blog already knows who Nutanix is, but maybe just give a, a quick introduction of the company and a quick overview. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, Nutanix was uh, originally started by some former Google engineers who uh, created Google's storage system internally, Google file system. And, uh, you know, they brought that outside the company and wanted to, um, you know, bring that to, to mainstream enterprises. So Nutanix is a pioneer in what's called HCI or hyperconverged infrastructure. So that's that, that storage system. And uh, that's how the company was started. Um, a few years later, um, we added our own hypervisor, which is called AHV. So now the platform could, uh, could provide data and run virtual machines. And then most recently, and this is kind of where I come into the picture, um, Nutanix has also been doing um, a lot more with cloud native and containers. So I joined Nutanix a little over a year ago um, when Nutanix acquired the company I founded, um, which was called Mesosphere, later renamed as Day2IQ. So, you know, we had been doing uh, cloud native and containers um, going all the way back to 2013. And um, we've now become, you know, the, the cloud native part of Nutanix. So now we have um, a single platform for enterprises to run both VMs and containers on a single storage substrate. Great. Now for uh, KubeCon attendees that will be listening to this, um, can you maybe talk about some of the specific problems that they might be facing that your company solves for them? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we really focus on um, giving people a complete and open Kubernetes platform that runs on any infrastructure. So it's complete in the sense that it's not just Kubernetes, it's actually over 30 or so other open source projects all integrated into a single solution. And those other open source projects are, you know, basically your most popular CNCF projects for everything from, you know, networking and observability and security and access control, uh, all assembled into a single platform. Um, so it's complete in that sense. It can go straight to production, but it's also open. It's based on open source software and it's modular so people can customize it and add other solutions um, from the CNCF e ecosystem. So we make it really easy for them to stand up Kubernetes, um, a full Kubernetes platform on any infrastructure. So it can be virtualized infrastructure. It can be bare metal infrastructure. It could be on a cloud. It could be, you know, private cloud or private data center or the edge. And then because uh, large organizations in particular increasingly are running you know, many, many different Kubernetes environments and are doing that on that mix of infrastructure, we also have super advanced Kubernetes fleet management capabilities so they can manage all of those different environments with a single operating model and they don't have to build you know, individually managed environments, um, which creates a lot of issues. Now, could you put that a little into context of maybe walking us through a real world customer success story that showcases the impact of the technology. Absolutely. So there's um, a customer I always love talking about. It's Royal Caribbean, the cruise line. And, um, you know, if anyone who's listening uh, has been on a Royal Caribbean cruise, um, they've probably used um, a mobile app to, you know, check in on the ship and, um, you know, book excursions, make restaurant reservations and so forth. So um, the back end for that app, that um, passengers use while they're on the ship uh, runs on our platform. And uh, because you know, passengers use that application while they're on the ship out on the ocean, that backend actually runs on each of their ships. So it's you know, sort of a mini uh, data center, um, a Kubernetes cluster running on, on each of their ships. And uh, what's interesting about that is you know, they have a large fleet of ships and um, those need to be pretty autonomous, right? Um, unfortunately, they don't have, you know, lucky platform engineers that get to, you know, sail out with the ship every time just to maintain those environments. Um, they need to be highly automated, right? So they picked our platform to do that so they can remotely manage those environments over, you know, a satellite link 
with you know very little um, you know outside help um, and have those environments uh, to be pretty autonomous. Um, what's interesting too is the ship environment is not the only environment where they're running, but um, you know they're developing on the cloud too, and they're running in data centers as well. So they really needed um, a Kubernetes platform that can run in a mix of environments, including these on-ship environments where you know you have a poor internet connection and uh, you know things are are sort of at least partially air gap. So they really saw a ton of value by by picking a single platform that can run in all these environments. And, um, you know, that has all the add-ons that they need to go into production. But that was very interesting. Um, so for people that are going, going to be at the show, uh, there's going to be tons of vendors there. I mean, KubeCon keeps growing year after year and getting bigger and bigger. Um, how do you guys stand out among the rest of the competitors on the show floor and kind of what makes your technology unique? Yeah, so there's a, there's a couple different things I would talk about. Um, if we're just talking about our Kubernetes platform, um, which is called NKP, the Nutanix Kubernetes platform, um, you know, what really differentiates NKP is that complete and open nature of it. So, you know, complete, ready to go to production, but it's open, it's customizable, it's open source based, uh, which means that when customers build applications on, on top of it, they are Kubernetes native applications. They're not, uh, you know, we don't have a, um, a pass layer, a proprietary pass layer that sits on top of Kubernetes that would lock those applications in. They are truly uh, using an open source based platform uh, anywhere they want to run it. So, and, and we think that's also important to keep it open to the whole uh, ecosystem and to make it, you know, compatible with all the other solutions out there. And again, some customers like to customize the platform and you know turn certain add-ons on and off and, and use other things from the CNCF ecosystem. So uh, we think that's really important. There's so much innovation happening in the CNCF, uh, right? We, we choose some of the technologies that make up our platform. But if a customer wants to go a different route, um, we don't want to keep them from doing that. We, we want to keep it open in that way. But at the same time, being complete, um, and um, the next thing I would mention is the fleet management capabilities we have. So we were one of the early adopters of Cluster API, right? Uh, which is um, the API that extends the Kubernetes API model, this declarative API model to managing the clusters themselves, managing the infrastructure. And so what that really enables is that customers have a single operating model for Kubernetes wherever they may be running it. They don't have to do it one way on the cloud and do it a different way on-prem. They can do it one way. Really cuts down um, the number of scripts they have to write and other automation they, they have to build. But um, that's just talking about our Kubernetes platform. You know, um, what's interesting is that um, VMs have become a bigger topic at KubeCon too. Um, and so I think every infrastructure leader is now thinking about, well, over the next 10 years or so, I'm going to be running a mix of VMs and containers, right? I'm going to have a huge estate of VM-based applications that I'm going to maintain for a long time. And, uh, you know, I'm also building a lot of new container-based applications. So I kind of need to do both. And so what Nutanix uh, has to offer that I think is pretty unique is we have a platform that can is mature as a virtualization platform and it's a mature container platform. And it, uh, it has a, a single data substrate underpinning both of it. So I think that combination of, um, of multiple of our products is really um, a big differentiator. And, um, you know, of course, we also look ahead. Um, and so a, a newer addition to our stack that launched uh, last year is uh, what's called NAI or Nutanix Enterprise AI. So that's an AI platform that runs on top of Kubernetes. Uh, and so with that, we're really bringing AI compute to wherever customers um, have their data that they want to run models with. So, you know, differentiator is kind of a unique approach um, with the Kubernetes platform itself, but it's really the whole product portfolio coming together um, that, that I think is super differentiated. So talking about AI, uh, you know, that's been a, a big trend and everybody seems to be trying to scramble to find ways to incorporate it into their uh, development. Um, what key trends are is Nutanix seeing taking shape in 2025 and beyond? And how is this roadmap aligned with these developments? Yeah, AI is, of course, the big one, right? It's, it's what everybody wants to talk about. Um, 
you know, I think AI will make every product better. And so that's, that's why we're having great conversations uh, with every one of our customers. They're trying to, you know, figure out how to best take advantage of it. And, you know, it, to put it very simply, what, um, what we can help customers with is basically bring AI to their data instead of them having to bring their data to AI, to a public, you know, AI endpoint. Um, we work with a lot of customers that have, you know, that are in regulated industries or um, that are doing, you know, defense and other use cases where uh, you cannot use public AI endpoints. And so what we've um, really done is, is made it easy to deploy uh, the leading models um, from, you know, our partners like Hugging Face uh, and NVIDIA, you know, where their data sits, where they're running their existing environments, um, where the enterprise data sits. And so that's what we're doing uh, roadmap wise is, is making that really, really easy. And uh, because our AI platform runs on Kubernetes, of course, it runs everywhere that Kubernetes runs, which is literally everywhere now. Um, so I think that's, you know, by far the biggest trend. Um, I think other trends that we're, we're seeing is, you know, platform engineering is something that has been talked about at KubeCon for a few years now, but, um, you know, it's still early in terms of mainstream enterprise adoption. Many organizations, um, I would say sort of that first generation of uh, Kubernetes environments that have been built, um, have really been built bottoms up in a lot of cases, right? Individual development teams or product teams built their own clusters, built their own environments, um, their own way of standing it up, um, securing those clusters and so forth. And as we're seeing organizations becoming more mature, meaning they have more Kubernetes-based applications running, they're moving more mission-critical applications to Kubernetes too, they're starting to rethink their approach a little bit, right? Because they're noticing, well, wait a minute, I have hundreds of environments right now and I don't have a single governance standard for them. I don't have a single way to secure them. I don't have a single way to upgrade them. So this platform engineering approach, which really advocates for centralized management of Kubernetes, right? You build a team that is responsible for providing the development teams with a stable, secure, resilient, scalable platform that they don't have to think about. Um, that is catching on more and more. It's a big trend. Um, it's something we've actually been advocating for um, since you know, when we created our product in the first place. Um, but, you know, it's still it taken a little bit um, to, to catch on. But um, that's a big trend we're seeing, you know, people are sort of, now that Kubernetes is mature, going into the, the second wave or second phase of um, how they want to manage it. And, and that involves uh, centralized management and, and our product is really built for that. Now, Toby, as we kind of discussed already, you know, KubeCon is, is a, a growing, becoming a massive show, lots of uh, vendors on the show floor. For the folks who are at uh, KubeCon and they come by and they, they visit the Nutanix booth, what's, what kind of message do you want them to, uh, to take away after visiting your booth? And maybe talk a little bit about what they can expect uh, to see you know, at your booth this year. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd say the, the, the main message I uh, want people to walk away with is, you know, as you're thinking about um, the next 10 years or maybe five years, you know, 10 years is a long time. And you're thinking about uh, your infrastructure needs, right? I, I think most organizations probably are, are looking at two continuums. One being, OK, I have a, a large VM estate and then I have a container estate, right? And and that's going to change over time, right? And some folks may have a very aggressive plan to switch from VMs to containers and others may say, well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of putting the VMs, you know, I'm going to continue to run those so I can have more uh, resources available for containers. But everybody is on that continuum. And so having a single platform that can do both, um, like the Nutanix platform, both run VMs and containers, um, is really, really valuable. And, and so, so I think that's, that's something for people to look into. And then the other dimension that I think everybody's thinking about is, all right, how do I manage my Kubernetes across all these different environments that I have on cloud and off cloud or edge environments, which um, you know, are really seeing a lot of um, adoption driven by AI. So having a single platform with a single operating model for Kubernetes on all of these different infrastructures um, is also something that is really, really valuable. And um, we'd love to have conversations around that and show you how we do that, how we stand up Kubernetes, lifecycle manage it, secure it, how we give you all these 
you know, best of breed um, technologies from the CNCF ecosystem in a single supported enterprise product. Um, you know, we'll have tons of people at the booth uh, that'll give you uh, demos. So love to talk to you. And kind of lastly, um, where can people go if they want to find out more information about Nutanix and more specifically the Kubernetes uh, products that you talked about today? Yeah, so to find more information, um, you can simply go to Nutanix.com. Uh, there's a section there about our Kubernetes platform or NKP. And um, there's a test drive there as well where you can try out the product. Great. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. And uh, we hope you have a, a great show in London. And um, maybe we'll get a chance to catch up to you one of these days. Fantastic. Thank you so much for having me.